So then guys, I'm about to buy the cheapest MacBook Air you can get right now for brand new. And the place that you can only really get it right now is inside Best Buy. So I'm going into Best Buy to buy myself a $650 M1 MacBook Air. And let's see how great it is still in 2024. So after looking around for a while, I couldn't find one on the shelf, but I asked somebody and they had one out back and I managed to buy myself a M1 MacBook Air for $650. Then after that, it was time to get back on the plane, head back to the UK and have a bit of a play around with the M1 MacBook Air. And that was shot a couple of weeks ago, but we've had new iPads announced and things like this. But I want to tell you today why I still love this M1 MacBook Air where you can pick up for around about $650 or you can even pick it up a little bit less for refurbished. And yeah, I just want to tell you why it's so brilliant. So this MacBook came out at the end of 2020 and still today, I define this MacBook as a benchmark as one of the best for overall speed, design and value still in 2024. It was the first MacBook Air to get Apple Silicon inside of it. So this one's got an M1 chip inside of it. And still lots of people rave about this MacBook Air today. And in fact, quite a lot of you in comments say that you've got one of these, love it, and don't want to switch out for say an M3 model or an upcoming M4 model. So with that, the question is, well, what makes this MacBook Air so good? For general use, including writing, work, video streaming, and even light gaming, the MacBook Air M1 is still an excellent choice. Sure, the M1 chip isn't the newest processor out there, but its performance is still sometimes better than Windows laptops in its price range today. The crazy thing too, is that the battery life inside this MacBook Air is absolutely phenomenal for a 13 inch model. I have never known another 13 inch laptop out there to get the same sort of amazing battery life like this MacBook Air that we have right here. Apple claim up to 20 hours battery with it, but let's just say a normal user having say Word open, and four Chrome tabs open with music playing in the background, a quarter sound and having the brightness at say half brightness, I'm able to get about 14 hours out of this MacBook today, what is incredible. What I also think is incredible about this MacBook is that I'm listening here, I can't hear any moving parts because there isn't any. There's no fan inside of this MacBook Air and yet it's still so light and yet gives us such great battery performance because it's got no fan or anything to move around to sort of drain that battery out. It's absolutely amazing. Like I say again, loads of laptops sitting around this price range, even around about $650, cannot be Apple's M1 because it's so efficient for everyday tasks. So if you are a student right now and you're looking for a bargain kind of MacBook out there, I would highly recommend this. Because like I said, even for me there, what I just told you about, doing 14 hours with those tasks there, 14 hours. You're not going to sit at university or college for 14 hours. And yet you can still charge it up. And charging's not that much of a problem either. You do have to use a USB-C instead of the new MagSafe 3, but you don't need that cable in for long because you can get from 0 to 80% in just one hour with the MacBook shut down. Now, next thing I want to talk about is the performance of this MacBook Air M1. Now, I'm going to say this right now. Performance isn't everything out there. Obviously, we do have the likes to say the M3 Max, the M3 Pro. And obviously, they are way faster than what you get with the M1. But this MacBook is for the majority of users out there. A lot of you are probably not even going to stretch the legs of the M1's potential out there. And remember this, guys. Benchmarks are not everything. So looking right here at Geekbench scores for the M1 versus the M2 versus the M3, we can see the improvement along the road. However, as myself and a lot of other creators and reporters have said, you do have more speed, but like we keep saying, you're just probably not going to see the difference between say an M1 and the M3 for everyday single tasks. Now, there is only eight gigabytes of RAM inside of this MacBook Air. And I will tell you the truth now. Let's say you had Word open, PowerPoint open. Let's say you had Chrome open with 10 tabs open too. Yes, you're going to start to see some slowdown with this MacBook Air. 
But I want to tell you something even more interesting than that, and that is if you had an M2 or an M3 MacBook Air with 8GB of RAM inside of it, what Apple sell right now, you would have the exact same slowdown. Having that new M2 or M3 chip doesn't make any difference here really. Like I'll say again, for the majority of people who'll be buying this MacBook for just say doing Word documents, writing up essays, browsing the web, sorting out their social media, maybe fiddling around with their vacation photos and videos and things like that, also sorting out your emails too, you really are not going to see a difference here. And just to show you this, even if I did a cold start here on opening Word on an M3 MacBook Air versus the M1 here, the M3 opened Word about one second quicker, what is nothing when the totals were 12 and 13 seconds to open up Word here. If the difference was more like say 12 to 25 seconds, then I would say yeah, there's something in it here and that you should actually pay the premium of getting yourself say maybe an M3. MacBook Air. Now, one other thing to quickly mention about the M1 MacBook Air, you only get 256 gigabytes of storage, and this is quite good for just a few basic documents and things like this, but if you need to expand out your storage, you're better off getting yourself an external SSD, just like the Lexa SL500. It is super thin, and it is an amazing hard drive for something like a MacBook Air, and also for other MacBooks out there too. You can get super fast read and write speeds on USB 3.2 Gen 2x2. So this allows you to get read speeds up to 2000 megabytes and write speeds of 1800 megabytes. And as you just saw there, it's still really fast with the USB 3.2 Gen 1 speeds here, what the MacBook Air M1 offers. The hard drive is also super slim and also super light. You can also use it with your iPhone to do ProRes recording, say on an iPhone 15 Pro model. And also, if you're worried about this hard drive getting too hot, well, there's some great benefits what this hard drive has. It has a global leading NAND flash controller manufactured specifically for the SL500, and it only uses a single NAND chip inside of it, reducing power consumption and heat generation. And the design of the case around here also dissipates also heat really easily away from it. Like I said, this is one of the thinnest and lightest SSDs I've ever used. It's even thinner than say my iPhone 15 Pro Max, as you can see right here. And if you want to find out more information about this Lexa SL500, then do check out the information that's in the description of this video right now. Now, for things like Photoshop with lots of raw layers and things like this, and let's say you're also going to do, say, video editing with Final Cut Pro and all of this too, well, to be honest, it can do it, but really it's not designed for this. It doesn't have a fan inside of it to keep it cool, and you are going to start to throttle. But this is not what this MacBook Air is for. You shouldn't be buying one of these to do those kind of tasks every single day, because yes, your ex gets slowed down. Don't get me wrong, it can handle those tasks, but it will start to slow down and it also will start to get hot. And that is why the MacBook Pros exist out there with higher amounts of RAM, with fans inside of them, and also more cores inside of them too, to actually do those kind of tasks more efficiently and faster and cooler for you. But I'm not going to go into any more details than that. At the end of the day, this MacBook is for the masses for everyday tasks. It's designed for home use or for study use, and it's also designed to just work with one monitor, what most people will be absolutely fine with. Next though is design. Now the design did come out in 2018 and only had a short life, but it's still great today. It is super easy just to pick up, and yeah, it just feels really, really light as well. And also, I still love this kind of sort of slated, slanted design, what the new M2 and M3 MacBook Air will not give us today. There are also some tiny niggles as well to go over. So for example, the borders around the edge are slightly thicker than in most premium laptops today. But to be honest, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't have, say, a notch either, what is good. You also do have two USB-C Thunderbolt ports, but again, for most people, this is going to be absolutely fine. And if you do need more ports, well, you can buy yourself a USB dock like here for about $20 on Amazon if it really bothers you. I absolutely so you love the full size keyboard too on this MacBook Air and the touchpad is also nice and large for any task. 
The speakers also in the inside or tucked away down here, they're reasonably good. And generally, like I say, just overall, I'm just so in love with this M1 MacBook Air. I really cannot say that it's a bad machine, or I cannot really point out something that is terrible about it. There will also be some of you going, well, Matt, this MacBook Air M1 is not going to get as many updates as, say, the M3 MacBook Air. And you're probably right there. And to be honest, looking right now, you're probably going to get about another four new macOS updates. And that is also including the one we're going to get in 2024. But then you'll get a further year security updates after that. So there's at least about another, say, about five years usage out of one of these machines right now. And yet you can pick them up for around about $650. Even refurbished with, say, six to eight months warranty on some on eBay, you can pick them up for even, say, about $500 or less. Again, this is still amazing value. Now, there are certainly more powerful and more expensive laptops and MacBooks out there. And also, it's the same the other way around. You can buy yourself an Intel MacBook or you can buy yourself, say, an Intel laptop. What will cost you far less. But for overall, on performance-wise, and what you're getting inside all of this all together, nothing really can beat the M1 MacBook Air. So there we have it guys, the M1 MacBook Air is still a fantastic device or MacBook to buy in 2024. What are your thoughts though on it too? Do you own one of these right now? Or are you even still thinking about possibly getting one of these this year? Let me know in the comments below. And on that note as well guys, it's time to wrap up this video. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. Also you want to hear the latest Apple news, reviews and comparisons. Please also make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell too. Until next time guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.